Hi everyone, my name is Richard Santoro and I welcome you to Third and Zen, the YouTube channel where every week we're sharing a spiritual message to nourish ourselves, heart, mind, body, and soul. First, let me thank you for stopping by the channel and checking out the video. If it's your first time here, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And if you're someone that frequently checks out the channel and the videos, thank you. I do appreciate you and your presence here. If you want to like, subscribe, share, all that stuff, much appreciated. I hope you're doing well. I know as usual, there's always something going on in the immediate society and in the world around us and the big global world. And this week is no different. Love, prayers, thoughts to everyone that's experiencing everything in the world going on around us. I hope you're taking time to care for yourself and to love one another the best that you can possibly do. So my peace and love to you. Right now, we're going to share a little special message this week because we find ourselves in the midst of the beginning of Lent. Whether I'm dropping this video on Tuesday before Ash Wednesday or on Ash Wednesday itself, we're going to talk a little bit about Ash Wednesday, what that means in general, and maybe what that means for us right now, and how we can find fruit for our journey. So I don't like to always assume that everybody knows everything about the basic nuts and bolts of the Christian journey and what things mean on our calendar and liturgy and all that. So let's just, let's pause for a moment. Let's make sure that we're all on the same page. So Ash Wednesday, what is it? Ash Wednesday is a day that you might have seen where people go to churches and they get ashes on their forehead. And you hear phrases when you get ashes on your forehead from, uh, from dust you were born, from dust you will return. It means several things. The marking of ashes has deep-rooted tradition and deep-rooted meaning in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Not going to get into all of it, but really it is a reminder of our mortality. Ashes from ashes to ashes. And it does have its roots in, in scripture, Hebrew scripture, as well as, as Christian New Testament scripture. And it marks the beginning of Lent. So let's really more focus on that, on Ash Wednesday, marking the beginning of Lent. Lent goes back to the tradition that is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, three of those Gospels, where at the onset of his ministry, where Jesus is baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, that's the start of things for him. But before he goes out, before he starts his entire ministry and his work and all the things in those three years that we know about and hear about, after being baptized by John the Baptist, he goes by himself, alone, in the wilderness. And the stories tell us that he is tempted, tempted by Satan, and it's sort of a vision quest experience for 40 days for him. And that's not something new in the human experience. We see it in all different faith traditions and all different philosophy traditions great figures having that, that moment in the beginning of their journey where they separate themselves and they go inward journey, outward journey to prepare themselves. So Lent is a 40-day period of preparation. Now, it's actually longer than 40 days in the Christian tradition. It's actually 46 days because we don't count the Sundays. That's the Lord's Day. So it's a time of preparation it's a time to prepare for the coming of Holy Week, which includes a lot of different events, a lot of different events, Holy Thursday, the Last Supper, and then Good Friday, the Crucifixion, and then, of course, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. So in its essence, let's get it back down to a fortune cookie size thing that we can all absorb. Ash Wednesday, we get the ashes if we choose, and that starts the season of Lent, which is a season of preparation preparing ourselves for Easter. And it all goes back to Jesus's time of preparation in the wilderness before he starts his 40 day, his, I'm sorry, before he starts his three year ministry. Now, Lent is also a time of year where people traditionally like to go without. They sacrifice something. It's a time of repentance. It's a time of denial, denying oneself things. A lot of times people will give up sweets or meat or alcohol or TV or movies or nowadays social media, all different things. It's a time like Jesus went without in the wilderness. People will also go without sacrifice like Jesus, but also as a time of repentance. It's a time of turning away from sin and turn, turning towards God 
as a part of that preparation for Easter. Now, this is where I want to pivot now that we've given some foundational information, some sun, good old-fashioned Sunday school information, make sure we all know what Ash Wednesday is, we all know what Lent is, we all know what the roots of it are, and how people have tried to experience it through the years for themselves and through the Christian journey, through, through the church journeys. Let's talk about us for a moment. Me, you, all of us here watching it, how can we best journey through Lent? It's not my place to tell you what you should do. You find the best path that you think God is leading you down. But I just want to give us some, some advice, maybe, uh, a way for us to possibly nourish ourselves, heart, mind, and soul, for a very fruitful Lenten journey. You know, what often tends to happen for Christians traveling down the Lenten journey towards Easter, as I mentioned, maybe we go without, maybe we sacrifice something, or maybe we do something in the positive. We say grace before dinner every night during Lent, maybe if we don't usually do that. Maybe we read something that is spiritually nourishing. Maybe we read scripture every day, or maybe we read a book that's been sitting on our bookshelf every day. These are all beautiful, wonderful things to do. I highly encourage us to do something during Lent. But here's where I really want to put the emphasis on for us. Yes, prepare for Easter. It's always a beautiful and wonderful thing to do, but what does tend to happen with a lot of us, Lenten journey, Easter, we enjoy Easter, we have the Easter eggs, the chocolate, the rabbits, maybe the Easter ham, Charlton Heston, Ten Commandments, all the tradition, all the fun, we enjoy it, and then the Monday comes and we reset, and life goes back to whatever it was before. Ash Wednesday, before Lent, before Easter, before all of it. And I want to encourage us to not allow that to happen. Let's not hit reset after Easter. Let's maybe make our Lenten journey about the day after Easter. Because if Jesus was going off into the wilderness as a time of preparation as a time of maybe transformation, as a time for him to get himself ready for his ministry, for his spiritual journey, for his spiritual work that he was going to do, maybe we can do the same thing. Maybe instead of it just being about a preparation for Easter, we make it about a preparation for the day after Easter. Because, you know, they do say, and whoever the they is, don't ask, but they do say that doing something for 30 days makes it a habit. If we want to do something, whether it's exercise or reading or whatever positive thing we want to make habitual, do it every day for 30 days and it becomes a habit. Well, we have 40 days plus to make things a habit, a spiritual practice, a heart, mind, body, and soul practice. Like Jesus was preparing himself. For that time after his time in the wilderness, we maybe could prepare ourselves for the time after Easter. So what do you feel you're being called to? What do you feel you're being moved to? As the great Sufi poet Rumi says, do what excites your soul. Is it painting? Is it reading? Is it reaching out to loved ones more? Is it reading scripture more? Is it volunteering in some way? Is it helping people in some way? Is it growing yourself, growing your soul, growing your heart, growing your mind, growing your body in some healthy, beautiful way? Then let's do that. We all have a ministry. We all do. You know, I had a conversation with a family member recently, just last week, where they were joking about how there was a time they thought Christ was Jesus's last name. Jesus Christ, Mr. and Mrs. Christ, whatever. No, Christ is a title. It comes from the Greek, Christos. The Hebrew translation of that word is Messiah. Christ, Messiah, and the English translation, anointed one. Anointed one. Now, why am I taking a moment to point this out? In the Jewish tradition, which is what Jesus comes from, Christ comes from, the Messiah comes from, who was anointed? 
who was anointed, anointed with oils? Well, three different types of people. Priests, prophets, royalty, kings, queens. So to be the Christ, to be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ, to be anointed ones as we are, we can live the life of a priest serving God. We can live the life of a prophet bringing God to others. We can live the life of royalty, leading and caring and providing for people in some way, shape, or form. So, hi, Jean. Jean's enjoying this message, my cat. So maybe as a time for us to prepare during Lent, we're preparing for a ministry. So again, I ask you, in those moments where you're still, where you're quiet, where you're just breathing or daydreaming or letting your mind wander, where is God moving you? What excites your soul? What can you prepare for for the day after Easter to serve God, to serve others, to pro provide for others? What can your ministry, your heart, mind, body, and soul journey of service be about the day after Easter? What can you do? So many things, so many things. How can you love God? How can you love your neighbor? And how can you love yourself better the day after Easter? Maybe that can be what our Lenten journey is about this year. Yes, repenting, turning away from whatever negativity, unhealthy, whatever, and turning towards God, yes. That's always wonderful and beautiful to do. Maybe whatever sacrifice you want to make to grow yourself stronger in heart, mind, body, and soul, great. Preparing for Easter, amen. Highly encourage it. And in addition to all that, what can you prepare yourself for as a habit for the day after Easter? Like Jesus prepared himself for his ministry and after that 40-day period that he spent in preparation. So, as we recognize Ash Wednesday, as we start our Lenten season, I do want to encourage all of us to not hit reset the day after Easter, after we have our chocolate and the Easter bunny and the ham and the celebration that is so beautiful and wonderful. What can we make a habit? For the day after Easter. So that's my words of encouragement and gentle advice for us for the Lenten season going forward. Whatever you're moved to do in a soulful, spiritual, God-led way, I encourage you. Whatever excites your soul, do it and make it a habit for the day after Easter rather than hitting reset. Thanks be to God. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for stopping by the channel. I want to thank you for your presence. I, I hope this video finds you doing well. I'm glad you're taking the time, even if it's just watching this video, to care for yourself, heart, mind, body, and soul. If you know of anybody else that might benefit from that, from any of this message, from any of it, feel free to share it with them. But I wish you peace on your Lenten journey and your daily journey every day. Thank you for you. I love you. Have a great day. Have a great Lenten journey. Peace to you. Amen.